come to one more such independent property that we need to ask in the context of systems and that is relevant when we are talking about the independent variable of time, not so much when we are talking about the independent variable of space or any other kind of independent variable. But when the independent variable is time, then we do have a notion of fixed directionality. You cannot move backward in time, you can only move forward. If you are dealing real time, then you need to move only forward. If you are dealing offline, then you can of course, use samples from the future too. So, we ask whether a system is causal or not causal, that is another independent property. Now, we say a system is causal if the following happens. You perform two experiments on the system. with two inputs. So, you have a system S, not, not LSI, I am not saying it is LSI. So, you give it an input x 1 n and you give it an input x 2 n and record the two corresponding outputs. The only catch is that x 1 and x 2 are identical up to some n equal to n 0. x 1 n is equal to x 2 n for all. Now, this please remember, I'm, I will not keep writing this again in future, for all n less than equal to n 0, for some integer n 0. Causality means, causality means and is meant by y 1 n is also equal to y 2 n for all n less than equal to n 0 and for all such x 1, x 2 and n 0. That means, take any such pair of inputs which are identical up to some n equal to n 0 and apply them to the system in two different experiments. Study the output. The output is identical up to that point n 0 if the system is causal and vice versa. The system is causal only if these outputs are identical for all n less than equal to n 0 and this happens for any such choice of inputs x 1, x 2 and any point n 0. We need to spend a minute in reflecting on what this means. What this means is, if I have two inputs which are identical in all respects up to a point in time, a causal system does not show any difference in its output up to that point in time. Needless to say, there could be differences afterwards if there are differences in the input. Another way of understanding this is, the system never looks into the future. The system has no idea whether the, the inputs could be different in future and therefore, in the benefit of doubt, it remains identical in its output up to the point where the inputs are identical. Now, of course, the word causal suggests that causal refers to cause and effect. So, an identical cause produces an identical effect. There is a relationship of, you know, you can talk about cause and effect only with an ordering. If there is a one after the other relationship in time, then you can talk about cause and effect. Otherwise, cause and effect is not very well understood. If an effect comes before the cause, then it is not an effect at all. So, that is why we say a system is causal, if it follows the principle of cause and effect. Now, again causality is independent of linearity, shift in variance or stability. And that is therefore, a fifth possible property that a system could have or not have. Is that right? Now, we can see that if you want dependence only on the past, that is what we are trying to say in effect. You know, if you look at the convolution expression y n,
if you look at the convolution expression, and if we wish that y of n at any point n have nothing to do with future samples, that means nothing to do with negative k's here. You see, when would y of n involve future samples? When minus k is positive or k is negative, and that means you know for all negative k, h k needs to be 0. It is very easy to see that if h k is equal to 0 for all negative k, then y of n depends only on x n and x n minus k for positive k. That means, all past samples so to speak. I leave it to you as an exercise to prove this more formally. I have of course, given you an informal argument, but I leave it to you to prove formally. That means, show that it is necessary and sufficient, prove formally. An LSI system is causal, if and only if its impulse response obeys h n equal to 0 for all n less than 0. So, by proving it formally, I mean that you must show it is necessary and sufficient. And that means, you must first assume this condition holds and show that it is sufficient for two identical inputs to produce an identical output up to that point in time. And then also take the counter part of it, namely if I have two inputs, if I have any set of inputs which are identical up to a point in time and if I want the outputs to be identical, that cannot happen unless all the impulse response samples at negative indices are 0. So, I leave it to you as an exercise to prove this formally. Anyway, we have now identified five independent properties of systems. Let us list them. Additivity, homogeneity or scaling, Shift invariance, stability, and causality. Needless to say, for a system that is linear and shift invariant looking at the impulse response should tell us everything and therefore, it tells us whether the system is stable and whether it is causal. And we have also identified how we can do so. Look at the impulse response, look at all the negative located samples, if they are all 0, the system is causal. Look at the impulse response, take look at its absolute sum, if the absolute sum converges, then the system is stable. And finally, we take one more property of systems, namely the property of memory, not quite independent, not quite independent. That is why I did not say sixth property, the, prob the property of memory. Now, we say a system has no memory if and only if y n has to do only with x n. and no other 
x n minus k for k not equal to 0. So, it is a point by point relationship that is called a system without memory. An example is y n is mod x n or y n is equal to x n or for that matter even x n plus 8 if you like or y n is x n squared. These are all systems without a memory. And of course, it is very easy to give examples of systems with memory just involve some other term like x n minus 1 or x n plus 1 and there you have memory with you. As I said, memory is not entirely independent of the other properties. In fact, you know, if a system is memoryless, it is automatically causal. They are not entirely independent. So, systems without memory or memoryless systems are exam are one class of causal systems. That is, of course, a bit of a relationship there. 